the third question, which uh, we will address first to uh, Dr. Erickson, um, is, do you support the Arizona College and Career Standards? Why or why not? Well, it's almost a moot question because we are doing college and career readiness here in Prescott. I firmly support high standards. I always have. I like academic rigor. I think it's extremely important. I do not support, and I'm going against some people here in my district, I do not support Arizona College and Career Readiness. I do not support it because I don't think it's developmentally appropriate at certain levels. I read um, educators every day. I'm on the computer every day. I do want you to know that um, five states did not participate. Five more opted out, and that is Alaska, Minnesota, Nebraska, Texas, and Virginia. Um, Several states are opting out of the testing that's going along with Common Core right now. It's a real hotbed. But those um, leaders in education that I'm reading, and that's Diane Ravitch and Mr. Stringer, I get all of my information from well-documented sources. And when I said about money mattering, that was Dr. Linda Darling Hammond, professor at Stanford University. She has all the data here, which proves that money does matter in education. But I am very concerned about the funding it's going to take to implement Common Core. Um, I think we have very good standards. We need to improve what we have in Arizona. I don't like the federal government coming in the back door, stomping on our 10th Amendment right. It is a state's responsibility to educate its children. So therefore, I am a bit concerned about it. Uh, I was just reading uh, from a teacher in New York that, okay, 15 seconds, who wrote a book about Common Core. She was all for it. She's a principal. She has since now, after it's been implemented two years, has done 180. Tennessee now, 60 some odd percent. They've been uh, implementing Common Core for three years. 60 some odd percent now are saying, Abandon it. We don't want to use it. Finally, Ms. Erickson and I find something to agree on. I am also an opponent uh, of Common Core, uh, although I do believe in high standards. Arizona had high standards with the uh, with the Ames uh, system. I don't think Common Core has improved the standards that we had uh, under Ames. Um, I did want to comment on one point that Ms. Erickson made with respect to funding. If student performance was so closely aligned or, or, or correlated with funding, why is it that the jurisdictions that spend the most, Washington, D.C., New York City, L.A., why do these students lag? Why are their schools so poor? Here in Prescott, Arizona, we spend about half of the national average. I think Ms. Erickson said it was about $12,000. We're spending $6,500 per student here in Prescott, Arizona. Our schools are better than Washington, D.C., which is the top spender and has the lowest scores in the nation. So the correlation simply isn't there. You can't buy brains. You can't buy a family culture that supports education. Right? So it's much, much more complicated than just spending money. Um, with respect to Common Core, uh, I don't support it. And I have very good news for Ms. Erickson and some of the others who uh, are opposed to Common Core. Uh, I had the opportunity this weekend to speak with uh, uh, Doug Ducey, who's the Republican candidate uh, uh, for governor, and, uh, and Robert Graham, who's the head of the Republican Party for the state of Arizona. And after Thursday night's debate between Diane Douglas and Mr. Garcia, Diane Douglas has spiked to an eight-point lead in the polls. She is the strongest opponent of Common Core, and she is now leading in the polls. Thanks. Well, this is definitely a hot topic, uh, at least in the circles that I've been running in lately. Um, I would say first that we, we need to recognize that the state adopted Common Core Arizona College and Career Standards uh, three years ago. And so uh, that happened, 
and, and our teachers for the past three years have been implementing this in language arts and math. And what I've been seeing coming home is mixed reviews in terms of uh, homework and those kinds of things that I see coming back uh, with my kids in, in terms of their homework. Uh, but I would say that I, I want to first recognize that, again, teachers are doing the best they can with what they've been given. They've been asked to do this. It's not their choice. They have to uh, teach to Common Core or Arizona College Career Standards. But I would say for me, I agree with uh, probably the, the rest of the candidates here, and that is that I would prefer that we have local control. I think we can come up with good standards locally, uh, state and local standards, with teacher input, and those people that are in the classroom that are teaching our kids should be the ones that are involved with raising these standards up. And so I am for high standards, and I want them to come locally, and I think uh, that we could do that better uh, locally. I'm also uh, just concerned about the one size fits all. When you look at Common Core, I would rather there be more creativity and more opportunities for different kids who come into those classrooms to, to learn at different levels. And so I, I don't like the one size fits all. I don't like the retention standards. And I'm very concerned about the money that this could cost us in terms of the testing that's required. So we don't have the money for that testing. So I'm very concerned about, about Common Core, uh, and so let's hope that these things might change with our legislature and our governor, as uh, Mr. Stringer has mentioned, and uh, maybe, maybe we can come back to local control and making sure that our teachers in our district have more control over what's going on in the classroom. It's difficult to amplify on everyone's against Common Core, because I am too. And I'd like to see us return to the original Arizona standards and testing and exit Common Core. But it's not as easy as waving the magic wand, as it is the law. And it has to be taken down, taken down at Phoenix to be done away with, down at the state legislature and the governor's office and the superintendent of instruction. We need, we need the support of them to exit Common Core. Common Core basically limits education to a readiness to work environment. They're training workers. They're not educating students. It has to be understood that there's large commercial interests involved in Common Core. And that's from the people who do the testing to the NGA, the National Governors Association, and the, I have to read this, the uh, Council of Chief State School Officers. That's Mr. Hoopenthal, he's part of it. But those organizations are private. They're 501c3s, they're nonprofits, and you can donate them, donate to them just like a church and take a tax deduction. They're not open for freedom of information. It's because they're not a government agency. They're working with every large education company in the world to get control of all the public school money that is applied to books, computers, whatever it may be. This is a big business that's operating, and it came in the dark of the night. Tell me how 46 states signed on the Common Core in such a short time. Our state was like other states. They raced for that race to the top money, 25 million, and it's estimated Common Core is going to cost us 387 million, minimum. And they hadn't even read the standards when they signed on. So to sum it up, Arizona should go back to its original standards and exit Common Core and come down on your legislator and governor and the superintendent of schools down there. Thank you.